Aloha everybody, this is Randall here at the Brigham Young University Hawaii um, campus in Laie um, in one of the biochemistry labs. And what we're going to do today is uh, do a brief demonstration on how we can get this um, little electric car to run off of a, a glucose battery that we'll make out of this uh, PVC pipe here. Um, you see we have it wired up with the uh, platinum wires here. and. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to fill this with a liquid and um, the liquid is going to be comprised of these three different chemicals here um, sodium hydroxide uh, sodium hydroxide is a very um, strong base and uh, whenever working with this you'd always want to take precautions and use um, safety equipment such as gloves and goggles and such um, we also have here fructose um, fructose is something you can commonly find around the home um, Many of your juices, your juice concentrates, will be full of fructose, and uh, I'm sure all of you have heard of high fructose corn syrups and such. And um, our third chemical here is what we call indigo carmine. Indigo carmine is basically a blue food color. Okay, so now here's a better look at our biofuel cell taken apart a little. Um, the basics behind any battery is um, the same here that the, elect um, the electrons will flow from your anode to your cathode. In our case, the anode is this uh, platinum wire sticking out of our PVC pipe here. And on the inside, it's connected to this um, carbon felt here. The electrons will then flow through your mechanism and um, dump back onto this uh, wire here, which is attached to our cathode. And our cathode in this place uh, in this case is a manganese based uh, catalyzed carbon that is um, open to the air on one end so that uh, the reaction may take place. As you can see here, it might be kind of difficult to see, but we're using a platinum wire here as well as on the anode side. Um, the reason for that is any other type of wire um, may cause some type of uh, reaction within itself and uh, give off a false reading for us. So to be sure that we're getting the correct readings, we're using a platinum wire. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our solution that's gonna go within our biofuel cell. And uh, this is our basic um, recipe, uh, so you can call it. Um, we're gonna take three molar uh, sodium hydroxide and one molar fructose and 20 millimolar indigo carbine or your uh, blue food coloring. We're gonna mix these all together and this will become our so here's a quick look at our chemicals before we mix them up into solution form. Um, our indigo carmine or our blue food coloring, sodium hydroxide, and pellet form, and our fructose, which would be like a powder. And, uh, each of these will be mixed up to their uh, correct volume in liquid and then mixed together to create the the final three molar uh, sodium hydroxide, one molar fructose, and 20 millimolar of the indigo carmine. Okay, here are chemicals. This here will be the blue food coloring with the fructose, and this will be our sodium hydroxide. And what we'll do is we'll take these and mix them together. You don't want to mix the sodium hydroxide in too early, or uh, another side reaction may occur. And so, what we'll do is we'll take 150 milliliters of this and we'll mix it in with 150 milliliters of sodium hydroxide and you'll see it change colors as we do this and be careful when dealing with the sodium hydroxide again it's a very uh, dangerous chemical and also when you mix it with the your deionized water it's a very exothermic reaction so it'll give off a lot of heat in your hand. There you go and we'll mix this up just a little bit not too much. There you have our solution. <clears throat> what we're going to do next is pour the liquid into each one of our battery cells. We have three so obviously we made 300 milliliters. Um, you don't want to overfill these and get too much spillage all over like you've seen I've done in the past.
after we've uh, finished filling our battery cells, we can double check to make sure that the voltage is um, being put out is correct. Each one of these battery cells should put out approximately half a volt to about 0.6 volts, 0.5 to 0.6 volts. So here on our uh, voltmeter, put it on the cathode and the anode, and there you go, about 0.53, just about right. Uh, your typical AA, AAA battery um, puts out about 1.5 volts. Okay, now that we've got our three battery cells filled and ready to go, I'll quickly show you what we did with this uh, little car here. Um, what I've done is taken some old speaker cable that I had lying around the house and I soldered it directly, hardwired it to the motor of the, of the, uh, the car. And um, what we did was we ran it to this a fairly simple on off on um, toggle switch that you can get from any hardware store um, so what we did was we uh, one way is the positive is on the positive and the negative on the negative and uh, for a reverse to give us a reverse switch we've uh, switched the polarity of the battery and um, that'll give us a reverse and so we'll hook it all up and hopefully it'll work okay so what I've done here is I've hooked up each of the batteries from the positive end, the cathode, to the negative end. So the positive end, negative end, hooked up to the positive end of the next one, and the negative to the positive of the next. And this negative is connected to our switch here, and the positive is connected there. So our circuit is complete there. And so when I flip this switch, our wheels should turn. There you go. Here's a quick clip of uh, the whole circuit. From there, down the line to our switch. From our switch, all the way up to our car. And uh, we'll run it here so you can see the wheel spin. and they spin in the forward and the reverse motions.